different colors and then put a sword on the tool by three the glass and they'll stretch it out to about 30 feet. And cutting the tenons out of it. And they're adding another color glass right there. See Josh guide it in, and turn it off. And our glass boarders are all highly trained, experienced professionals. And they get their experiences from uh, places like the College for Creative Studies and also various fine arts programs at different state universities. Picked a great day to come by the glass shop. It's actually pretty cool in here today by our standards. The thermometer that we have here on the end uh, bottoms out at about 120 degrees. Well, that's only about 104 right now. You have to think that's as far away from the radiating furnace as it can possibly be. 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's where Josh is at right now. And Phil is cooling off the plenty rod that he's using. And then yeah, we'll reheat the glass inside of that reheating furnace. You can see that we have a number of different colors in our glass right now. Those will soon be wound together, and that'll give us the colors that we want inside of our candy canes. So right now they're both reheating the glass inside of the reheating furnace. Now we store our glass about 2,150 degrees. We achieve those temperatures by using natural gas and forced air. It's important for us to get just the right mix of glass together. We want to have just the right combination. It's a nice even heat all the way around. He's doing a little school bit shaping right now on that table. And does anybody have any questions? Now Josh is 
gathered up some more clear glass on there. So we've got a nice good gather of clear glass on there and then we'll do a little shaving. I believe it's only better to ready to stretch this piece out. I'm going to go ahead and cool off that blowpipe just a little bit. It'll prevent him from burning his hands while he's working on this piece. Shape. You can see that there's a twisted pattern that's on the inside of this glass that will end up making the candy cane pattern that's so familiar to all of us. By flattening it out on the end, we'll ensure that it's on the One of the advantages that we have here in the U.S. is that there are a lot of different glass blowers that have brought the techniques to this country over the years. So a lot of different techniques that you can learn here and incorporate into your own personal style. Just like that, we'll press it together. Now we'll bring it down on this end. And we're going to stretch this out to about 30 feet. You can see they keep twirling it, and that ensures it has that twirl design all the way throughout. So it looks orange right now, but as it cools, you'll see the color change. Like and they keep stretching and stretching like that. Later on, they'll use these pieces. They'll take the different 10 inch segments that they have, they'll put them in one of our ovens, or they'll heat up, and they'll make the candy cane shapes out of it. They get that even design all the way through up. And eventually it will be a glass candy cane like this one right here. Although the color, the color patterns will be different. We have a different pattern every single year. And you can see they're going to stretch it out a little more. And they keep blowing it like that, making it longer and longer. So it'll reach the length of about 30 feet. As you can see, the glass blowing is a teamwork process. You wouldn't be able to do this very easily by yourself. Wow. By working together, glass blowers can make more complicated pieces. They're going to stretch it out a little more, a little more. You can see we're giving it a good pull right there. It's not like a tug of war. 